Welcome back. We are here continuing our conversation about adoption and pet rescue, and we're thrilled to have Lisa Price from Priceless Pets and, and Peggy. <laughs> Hi, Peggy. Hi, Peggy. So, Lisa, thank you so much for coming in, oh, and we're so me. grateful for the work that you do. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us today. Yeah. This is amazing. We're thrilled. Tell us uh, how you got started with Priceless Pets. Uh, well, me and the other co-founder um, are escrow officers, um, and so when the marketing, you know, market crashed in 2007, um, we, you know, my clients were calling up and saying, oh my gosh, you know, these people are just leaving their animals behind, you know, either in the houses or Aww. just in the backyard. So the real estate agents were having a tough job because they were going in to do, you know, trash outs, whatever, and they were finding animals. People were just oh desperate. Gosh. They had mm -hmm. nowhere to dump their animals. And at the time, um, the shelter in our area that serviced in our immediate area was up to about 98% kill rate. Um, which is super overcrowded. So we, you know, kind of got together and said, what can we do to help at least our community? We can't, you know, save them all, you know, but we can at least make a difference in our community. So that's sort of how we, we started and why we feel that our organization is a more community-based. We mm -hmm. really try mm -hmm. to do the best job we can to help out our immediate communities and our surrounding communities with their animals. Mm, that's amazing. That is so amazing. now you have three locations. So yes. obviously it, it expanded well beyond your community. Yes. Tell yes. us tell us about the different locations. Well we started um the Chino Hills location, obviously that's where we were at. Um and the model, you know, has just really worked for us. We try to provide um, you know, a different style. Um, people didn't want to go to the shelters. Um, you know, now of course with Orange County being a beautiful facility, so those types of things have changed. But back then, um, you know, it kind kind of was a little bit doom and gloom and we were thinking, gosh, you know, how can we provide a better alternative? We can help save these animals and bring them to a location where people wanted to come to, to see their new pet and then to know that they're going to be safe, volunteer at, um, and kind of bring our community together. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a, you know, usually they're in retail spaces, um, they're about 2,000 square feet. Um, and that model worked really well for our city, and we were, you know, we were um, welcomed with open arms, and our city has been very, very responsive to that. So we took it to the next city over, which is Claremont, mm -hmm. um, and kind of started another one there. They're huge animal lovers. Mm -hmm. um, the, the council and the entire community have, have um, welcomed us with open arms, so we were really excited about that. And then a couple of years ago, um, Coast Mesa reached out to us and asked us if we could be the adoption um, contractor, the adoption center for the city of Costa Mesa. Wow. So we were kind of looking for that third location, and I wanted to come down you know, to South County somewhere um, and kind of help out some of the communities here, help out the, and support you know, the Orange County shelter. Mm -hmm. Um, which were struggling at the time with, you know, so many animals. Mm -hmm. They just, you know, service so many cities. So we wanted to do our part to be able to help as mm -hmm. much as we could. Um, and when Costa Mesa reached out to us, we, um, you know, we, of course, thought, well, that's, you know, naturally where we should put our mm -hmm. third adoption mm -hmm. center. So um, the city, the council members, everyone in that community has been just amazing. So it's really, really helped um, find animals, you know, homes and you know, with the support that they've had. So last year we did 2,600 anim plus animals mm. out of the three locations. So we're really Wonderful. proud of those numbers. You've yeah, 2,600 animals. Yeah, That is incredible. And I love the response from the community also to say, you know, we want to rescue these animals and, you know, see the value of the lives, mm -hmm. that, you know, that they have. Um, it's interesting how, you know, out of tragedy always comes a lot of good things if you let it, right? right. You know, with, in 2007 when people are, you know, desperate and uh, it's so neat that you found that need and you were able to fill the niche and create something that's just incredible out of it. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you so much. It's a happy message. And you don't... Um, you don't have just dogs, right? I think right. you have other animals as well. Right. We um, we started um, adopting or you know rescuing cats as well. Um, you know, cats are you know kind of forgotten about sometimes. Yeah. In the, you know, the um, how many animals that you know go in there, or how many cats go through an adopt. Um, 
a sheltering mm -hmm. system. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, really sad to, to think about how many cats actually get euthanized just from overpopulation. Mm -hmm. um, and then the city had, you know, that need, and, you know, they have so many cats in the city of Costa Mesa that needed to find homes as mm -hmm. well. Um, so we do cats and dogs primarily, mm -hmm. um, although, you know, we've helped bunnies. Orange County recently Aww. had that situation with a ton of bunnies, so we yeah. were able to rescue 21 of them, which Aww. was just huge. You know, a, lot. It's a, lot a lot of bunnies. Lot of bunnies. Yeah, <laughs> but we all came together and thought, you know, what? Can, how can we help, you know, Orange County with, um, I think they have like 300 or something. So we wanted to do our part. Yeah. So we do bunnies, and we even have... Um, we've had to take some reptiles and different things, um, you know. So any anywhere we can, if we can, mm -hmm. um, we want to be able to help those 20, animals. You found you found how many homes again for these animals? Twenty six hundred? Did you? Say? Yeah, last That's year. Last yeah, year. Twenty six hundred. Oh, wow, yeah, incredible. That is, that is just amazing. And did you do mostly dogs or mostly cats? Or? You know, um, I. We used to do primarily dogs, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, in the last, I would say, three to four years, um, our cat numbers, I think we did over a 1,000 cats. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, you know, a, a huge number um, of cats for us anyway um, mm -hmm. to be able to find that many cats at home yeah. Oh, yeah. in one year is really our cat team. We have an entire team that works, you know, tirelessly in trying to get those animals rehabilitated, um, you know, fixed and, and get back out there now in that's those beautiful a, homes. That's something really interesting because I know that a lot of times people are nervous about rescuing because they feel like the animal's been traumatized and they mm -hmm. might act um, act out against like their kids or whatever, you know. Can you like, speak to that a little bit and and kind of reassure our viewers like why what you're doing to make sure that they're very like you know, easy to work with and easy to have as pets? Um, well, we, um, you know, we actually, you know, kind of pick the animals that we mm -hmm. are allowed to come to our adoption mm -hmm. center. We also use, utilize foster homes that have a wonderful mm -hmm. foster base of over mm -hmm. 350 families that will help either rehabilitate them, um, you know, take them to their homes for, you know, a couple of weeks to kind mm -hmm. of interact and get us the better feel of, you know, what the animal's like mm -hmm. and can we bring the animal out of, mm -hmm. out of its shell. We also have behavioralists that we work with. Um, one of the things that we like to think sets us apart from other rescue organizations is we do have a lot of underaged volunteers. We are mm -hmm. primarily all volunteer-based organization mm -hmm. still, and we want to make sure our volunteers are safe, and we mm -hmm. want to be able to provide an opportunity for those younger adults and younger children to come in and see what it's like to be able to care for mm -hmm. animals. Some people maybe not be able to have pets, mm -hmm. but they could come in and love on the animals, walk them, and care for them mm -hmm. in a very safe setting mm -hmm. um, with you know a supervisor mm -hmm. and be able to feel the love that those animals get um, and give. So. Mm -hmm. Um, with that comes safety. We really have to make sure that the animals that we have at our adoption center are safe. Um, and we feel like we do a pretty good job at making sure that we're disclosing any type of behavior that we notice in the facility. Mm -hmm. um, also, anything that may have come along with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's rap sheet, so to speak. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but thankfully, um, we are not a complete open access shelter. Mm -hmm. So um, we try to make sure that anybody who is a danger to society or you know, may, you know, have a, a substantial bite history and we mm -hmm. don't feel that we can rehabilitate them, then we're not able to have them at our adoption centers. That's really a great, um, that gives a lot of reassurance because I didn't do, a, like I was, when we were considering um, getting a dog, we decided not to go with a rescue animal because I have five children and I was worried about the history. Had I known about you, we would have gone with the rescue option. So yeah. it's, it's really neat to hear about that. Yeah. How can people connect with you? How can they find you? How can they help? Um, well, we have our website, which is pricelesspetrescue.org. Mm -hmm. okay. um, everything you need to know about us is on the website. You, we do volunteer orientations at all three of our adoption centers. And we welcome anyone to be able to come in, volunteer, become a foster. Um, and if you can't foster, you know, donate. Um, we. From anything from five minutes to five hundred mm -hmm. hours to five, you know, fifty cents to five hundred dollars, whatever mm -hmm. you can afford or whatever your time, you know, fills, you can, you know, you can help the organization. And again, we 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 welcome everybody. Mm -hmm. um, the kids specifically are where our hearts are, really, too. Um, those high school age kids that could come in and you know really take interest in those animals and mm -hmm. really help 
get those animals out of their shell. You know, the scared ones that might be in the back that you may overlook and mm -hmm. think, oh, it's too scared or it might be a fear biter or something, mm -hmm. to really be able to work with those animals and get those animals to come mm -hmm. out and, you know, sell themselves, if you will, to get yeah. adoptions. Well, it's our goal to help people understand how to adopt and how to successfully adopt. Oh, thank so you. that's what this show is all about, and we're so grateful for you coming in and sharing oh, with thank us. You. And I know our viewers are going to respond, and oh, I'm sure you. they'll seek you out. And poor Peggy looks like Look, she she she's that. falling asleep. She's she's falling asleep. asleep. Oh, that's okay, okay, Mom. She's <laughs> <laughs> poor thing. It's yeah. tough work being a pet ambassador. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you ladies so much for having me. I really and appreciate it. We'll be right back. <laughs>